Hello and welcome, or welcome back to Naropa City Zoo. I hope you are all having a fantastic day. I am super excited about today's build because we are going to be putting together an African habitat. So we're going to be focusing on the giraffe. I really want to have giraffes in this zoo. Um, I think a couple of people in the comments have actually mentioned giraffes as well, and they are one of my favorite animals in the game. So I'm really excited to make a nice big safari-esque habitat for them. We're not going to add like a, a track ride through it or anything, but hopefully you like how it turns out in the end. I think uh, it's going to be really cool. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, I think without any further ado, let's just jump right into the speed build. All right. So right off the bat, uh, this habitat is being built around a sort of a viewing platform of sorts, I guess, because, you know, we always build viewing platforms <laughs> in this zoo apparently. But essentially my idea here was I wanted something to kind of look like, um, like one of those big flat mountain sort of things or like rock faces. Uh, right in the middle of the habitat that would be, you'll see it's going to be surrounded by water. Um, just to kind of give the animals a watering hole and then also use this top area as a little viewing area for the guests. <laughs> so that's kind of, it looks awful right now, but it w does, I think, work out pretty well in the end. Uh, over here on the far side, this is not how big this habitat's going to be. I ended up making a, an area over here for our future lion habitat as well. We are going to add the African lion into this kind of area as well, but obviously they need to be separated from all of our herbivores. So yeah, that is what that second area is for, and it does not get built in this episode. We'll be building that next episode. So here we're just adding in, this is where that watering hole that I was just talking about is going to be. Um, yeah, I wanted it to have less sharp edges. I have a really bad habit of putting way too sharp of edges into my water features and then the animals cannot get in. But this way they can actually wade into the water if they want to, um, any of the animals who swim. And I thought it would be a good idea just to make this connected, not to the aquatic water, the aquatic habitat water, but to just a little bit of water for the lions as well. Uh, so that that worked out really well. Here I kind of did a weird little trick with the barriers uh, just to kind of close it off. I don't think it matters because I'm pretty sure the lions wouldn't dive underneath anyway, but I figured we might as well just make sure that <laughs> it's, it's kind of covered up. Uh, but for this middle platform, uh, obviously here we're keeping with the theme that we developed right at the beginning of this zoo with these, uh, these are the stone, the stone temple pieces or something. Um, just colored black and kind of raised to different heights and I don't know I kind of I like the effect that it gives and I like how it matches um, you know everywhere else in the zoo we can kind of add this little feature every once in a while and it just kind of <laughs> provides a bit of um, a bit of cohesiveness to our zoo so this is basically that uh, we're gonna add waterfall features in as well which I think I forgot to do in the time lapse but I do uh, after after the time lapse is over as well so yeah, just uh, obviously you need to clean that up a little bit, clean this part up a bit, and then we will get started on the building that is going in here. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> the next thing that we build here is a little bit of a shelter. So this is just a pretty standard. We're using some of the metal pieces from like where we used elsewhere in the zoo, uh, just to build a nice little sheltered area here for our animals. Um, uh, nothing really gets put in here. It's basically it looks like that. We end up. Uh, this is going to be a little viewing area back here. So we're going to change this fencing to glass and then off camera, I believe, add a pathway that actually brings the guests over here just to kind of be able to have them view into the sleeping area as well. I thought that would be a nice little angle, bring some more people back there <laughs> uh, rather than just having them all come over to this area. But yeah, inside of the main building here, we've got a couple of bathrooms, uh, a couple of food stalls, drinks, um, and an info center, I believe was what we ended up putting in here. 
So, yeah, we don't have many info centers in the zoo. <laughs> I don't know exactly how, um, how useful they are, like whether or not people actually use them all that much, but we have some challenges to like make a certain amount of money off of info centers, so I figured we might as well start <laughs> putting more and more in. Uh, but yeah, this building here just ends up being, I mean, pretty typical for this zoo at this point. Like, it's hard to, I don't know, I mean, I guess I try to make everything a little bit unique. It's all kind of the same style, because that's kind of the point. <laughs> so this is a round uh, observation center. It's got glass walls um, with some of the other New World pieces and a little, this one I added a little a cute little glass like ceiling to as well. I really like how this one turned out. It was a lot easier to build than a lot of our other ones. Uh, it was very straightforward and I like that. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's nice to spend a lot of time building a building, but also sometimes it's nice to just have it work out the first time <laughs> and uh, just be able to focus a little bit more on the habitat, which this definitely let us uh, let us spend a lot more time on the actual habitat. Um, so I, I might have showed this uh, trick before, but essentially when you build round buildings like that, you can't make it a single object, at least as far as I understand. There's no real way to make it all as one piece unless you make it a blueprint. It still will not be one piece, but it lets you place it as one piece. <laughs> so in this case, I had kind of built it in this circle, but it wasn't really in the right position, but I couldn't move the entire thing. So. I said, hey, I made it a blueprint so that I could, uh, you know, turn it around, move it, that kind of thing. And of course, as always, I mean, it didn't turn out to be perfectly <laughs> rounded. I should probably figure out how to do that uh, perfectly every time. That would be very useful, but uh, it's in the back anyway. We're never going to see it. I'm, I'm not all that concerned about that. But yeah, you can see, you can kind of see in the inside there, uh, the l little shadows that it gives from that uh, rooftop uh, sunlight, I guess. So I really like how, I really like how that looks in here as well. And then the rest of the interior, pretty straightforward. We're just, you know, hiding the, <laughs> hiding the buildings a little bit and making them fit in to the space a little bit more seamlessly. In these round buildings, it is kind of like, obviously, you know, these buildings are square. It's hard to, unless I maybe attach them to the round parts, then it could look less like it's just sitting in the middle, but I don't know. For this building, it, it seemed good enough. Um, and then, yeah, played around with the paths a little bit. This side, I managed to bring out the observation a little bit further, closer to the glass, so you could, you know, maybe get a better look at the animals out that way. But uh, it didn't work that way on the other side. It just wasn't quite perfectly even. <laughs> so this is kind of a, the better viewing area. The other side is more, you know, it'll be more like just the place for eating, that kind of thing. But I think you could get some really fun views, especially of the lion habitat from here, hopefully. And then once all of the viewing devices and, uh, and donation bins are placed, I played a little bit with putting a little garden here. And then I realized that this looked really dumb, um, not having just a floor throughout the whole thing. I realized that I totally should have done this when I made the building and didn't. So I ended up putting this in manually, which is totally fine. It's, uh, it is what it is. I just kind of rotated this all the way around to make it. Uh, go through the whole building, but then needed to delete that garden because I could no longer be bothered to figure out how to make that look not dumb anymore <laughs> without having the uh, the curves from the path kind of showing it off, you know. So that's okay though. Uh, it was kind of a neat idea, but I think I think it worked out um, a little bit better, just allowing guests to, you know, it looks like they can freely walk in here now, even though they can't. I, I like the look where it seems like they probably could. And as I mentioned before, we've got a few little picnic benches there so that people can eat. And that pretty much wraps up the um, building portion of that, just kind of opening up the station here. So they don't need to actually take the gondola to get up here. They just need to walk up the exit ramp of the gondola, uh, which people totally can. So I think I'm going to just change that signage over there maybe to no longer say that it's the exit specifically, <laughs> but we will... Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not too concerned about that one. But yeah, here we are just decorating the habitat. So we have a bunch of animals here. Super fun. 
I'm really happy with how this looks and how many animals we got in there. <clears throat> Giraffes obviously being the largest animals that we have and then everybody else is kind of, they're small but they fill in the spaces really well and it's super fun. So here uh, essentially they were all fine with grassland African um, foliage so that's what we're working with and the ostriches wanted the least amount of coverage so I just put plants until we almost exceed the coverage limit for the ostriches and I, it actually is a lot more coverage than I thought it was going to be. I was a little bit afraid that this habitat was going to look super barren but it actually turned out. I, I, I like how it looks. Like <laughs> It looks like there's enough room for them to run around uh, and all of that but it still looks pretty because we have some trees and plants and that kind of thing but this that's pretty much the end of this time lapse i think we basically are just going through and making sure that all of the terrain is good and then we are going to just jump right back into the oh wait do we actually add the okay no here i was playing a little bit with uh with some features but we just added a few rock features and that was it so uh next we are just going to jump right back into the real time part All right, and here is our finished product. I'm so excited about this one. So we have, I mean, pretty much finished anyway. Obviously, we need to do a bit of enrich enrichment um, item adding as, uh, as we get some more research done in here. But here's what we're looking at. So I uh, got a ton of giraffes. <laughs> um, I just, I tried for quite a while to get as many as I possibly could. Um, so I think, why don't we just look at, take a look at it from over here so we can actually see who all we have in this habitat. Uh, so for African buffalo, we have three um, adults. So we have two females and one male. Um, and then they have already had one baby, which is awesome. I think, yeah, they're not monogamous. So both of them will be reproducing, which is great. Um, let's take a look. Who else? We have our black wildebeest, which we have a lot of them because I didn't realize um, that you needed a minimum of seven adults for them to be happy. So I just got um, five. I didn't really pay too much attention to their stats or anything like that. Um, and they're on con contraceptives just because I don't want uh, too big of a baby boom. <laughs> but we have a mating pair. They've already had one young one as well. And then everyone else is on contraceptives. But this just makes it uh, past the minimum of seven adults. So that is why there are so many of them, <laughs> but it's fine. This is such a big habitat. Uh, it's good to see it filled up. And ostriches, same sort of deal. We have two female, one male, and it looks like they have already had multiple babies. <laughs> so that's awesome. Uh, we, yeah, one of them is an albino as well. So it looks like we're getting some neat patterns on the chicks. <laughs> that's so cute. Okay. Um, and then, oops, there we go. We have a zebra. So we've got two males, one or one male, two female, same sort of thing. It looks like they're actually both pregnant, so that's really cool. And of course the giraffe. So we have yeah, one, two, three, four female and no five. Oh actually we've got lots. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven females and one, two, three, four males. So this is almost the max. I think it's eight females, four males, but um, I think this is probably enough for now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go through, I need to go through and put stars on everyone's names just so that I remember which ones were our original ones and they are going to um, stay in the habitat and breed until they can't anymore. <laughs> um, oh, it looks like we are having some issues with the hippos. Pygmy hippos are overcrowded again, okay. Well, I want to mostly focus on this habitat for now. <laughs> uh, so this is what it looks like in real time. It's fairly, I didn't want to put too much foliage. Uh, essentially the ostrich was the pickiest, so I just went almost up to their maximum uh, coverage for the foliage and everybody else seems pretty happy with it. Uh, nice big shelter here so we can fit the giraffes um, and you know everybody else as they please. Um, but yeah, a few trees here, a nice big watering hole for them too. Uh, I don't think anybody swims. Maybe, yeah, I don't think anybody swims, but, oh no, wait, somebody's swimming. Who's this? Okay, so the, like, wildebeests will swim. Um, that's cool. Yeah, mostly it's for a watering hole, but if they're gonna swim in it, then that is 
awesome too. And yeah, pretty plain habitat. <laughs> uh, that's not the main feature anyway. The main feature is this building for our guests. So I actually want to add some waterfall pieces here so that there's like some cute waterfalls falling into the lake as well here. But um, yeah, it actually looks like it's filling up quite well in this area as well. We've got a bunch of food going on here, a couple of bathrooms, um, a little seating area. And it actually looks like our info booth is getting pretty popular, so that's nice to see. It, uh, <laughs> I tend to find that they don't really use information booths all that much, but maybe they do now. So that's cool. It looks like she thinks that she can see the animals from here too, so that's fine. <laughs> um, it's not really meant to be a viewing platform. Over here, I think, is a little bit more realistic. Like, you can kind of see out on this side. Um, they can get a little bit closer to the edge but the path just didn't really work out that well on that side, and that is totally fine. Um, this is also a very good viewing angle, uh, just from up here. But I also added uh, the viewing area over here. So this is where all of our education is going to be. Um, I've hired two educators, and we have one of these for each animal, because apparently you can't have more than one on here. Let me know if you can. If I'm like wrong about this and you can have more than one animal, on one talk point at different times, let me know. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah, there's nothing here. So, yeah, I, I just have five of them. The two educators kind of cycle through them as they please. I don't really, I, I have them both on all of them. So hopefully that kind of works out and they'll be able to take breaks and, and do the talks when they need to. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of a look into the the little shelter area here, which is uh, a one-way glass, so hopefully they don't feel too exposed, but I thought it would be cool to just be able to see them sleeping and that kind of thing. And it's just a very short walk from this path over here. Um, what else? Yeah, so the only way for them to get up here right now is to either take the gondola or walk up the exit ramp, which I think is okay. I mean, it's not like this is so busy that it's gonna be get crowded going up and down anyway. I don't love that they're stopping here to view. Um, <laughs> Not the best, but that's okay. They're going to kind of stop wherever they want to stop. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So over here, I am planning on doing a lion ha habitat. So an African lion habitat. Um, essentially, we can have all the, you know, all of the more herbivore <laughs> animals over here. And then to finish off the Africa area, a lion habitat. And I think that's going to be really cool. This should be plenty big enough for a nice little pride of lions. Um, maybe even a little bit excessively large, but I don't know. I was thinking about maybe giving these guys a little bit more space and maybe cutting it off here, but we'll see how it looks uh, when we you know, start to get a lot of babies in here and stuff. We might need more space, but I also don't want it to feel too empty. So I know lions want a lot of room to roam around and that kind of thing. But with that, I'm also gonna bring the pathway um, out here so that they can view the lions from over here will make this uh, kind of all glass and then I think I'm gonna attach the path up to here so essentially be able to wander I'm gonna have to probably do something about that <laughs> um, but essentially I have a pathway that goes behind the buildings here and connects to the lion habitat and connects them back to the front so I still don't really see too much traffic going this way. I think as these animals gain a bit more reputation, I'm hoping it's going to drive a lot more of our traffic from, and also maybe once it's a loop, maybe that'll encourage them to, if they also want to see the seals, maybe they'll choose to go this way, even though it's a little longer. <laughs> Not really sure how the AI works for the guests here, but yeah, main goal is to have less people walking this way <laughs> through this center of the zoo, because that is way overcrowded but it also hasn't been on play for too long so it might even out a little bit better our guest needs are eh, kind of fluctuating quite a bit i think our, our thirst was in the green earlier and now it's back to yellow so again i think you know that's maybe something that we'll worry about when we actually have the zoo more finished because i'm still wary about you know adding in too much when you know we're still going to do this area um, as well, so maybe more traffic will go that way and and all of that kind of thing, but Yeah, I think that pretty much concludes this episode 
So as always, let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of this habitat? What else do you want to see in the zoo? How can I make these videos better? You know the drill at this point. <laughs> um, and I hope you have a fantastic week or day, however, you know, whatever you're watching these videos apart. And I will talk to you in the next one.